Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for October 24, 2023. Please leave a comment, like, and a share. And in the news this evening, Jamaican farm worker dies in Canada. A Jamaican farm worker is dead after he was found unresponsive in his room by a co-worker in Ontario, Canada. Earlier this month, the Ministry of Labour and Social Security said on Tuesday. He has been identified as Daniel Brown. The cause of death has not yet been revealed. Reports are that on October 7, Brown returned home from work, prepared a meal and went to bed. The ministry in a release said that on the morning of October 8, Jamaican Liaison Services Acting Chief Liaison Officer Altia Riley was contacted that Brown was found unresponsive in his room by a co-worker. The paramedics were immediately called, and upon their arrival, Brown was pronounced dead. According to the ministry, a senior member of its family services unit has visited Brown's next of kin on several occasions following his passing. The ministry has consistently kept the family updated on matters relating to Mr. Brown's passing and has shared any new information received by the coroner and other entities in Canada as soon as it is received, the release stated. St. Catherine Businessman Hospitalized Following Gun Attack A St. Catherine businessman remains hospitalized after he was shot and injured by unknown assailants along the Spanish Town Bypass early this morning. It is reported that about 12.40 a.m., the man was being accompanied by employees to dispose of garbage when they were pounced upon by two masked men on a motorcycle. The men brandished guns but the group ran and boarded their vehicle. The attackers fired several shots during which the businessman sustained a gunshot injuries to his back. He drove himself to the hospital where he was admitted. An investigation has been launched by the Spanish Town Police. Latest St. Catherine double murder victims identified The two men who were killed by gunmen in Orangefield District St. Catherine on Monday evening have been identified as a 34-year-old business operator, Omar Givons, and a 31-year-old security guard at Orangefield Primary School, Dayton Dwyer. It is reported that both men were at Givens' shop about 8 p.m. when four men drove up in a white Honda Street motor car and opened fire hitting them. Givens, who received multiple shots, died inside the shop. Dwyer, who was sitting outside, was also shot multiple times. This is the second double murder in the St. Catherine North Police Division in two weeks. Shocking development over witness statements in Beaches Stout trial. The Everton Beaches Stout McDonald murder trial faced a hurdle Tuesday morning when defense attorney Christopher Townsend discovered a serious issue with the disclosure of statements and evidence. Townsend, one of four attorneys representing Beaches Stout, raised the concern after he came across a statement which was allegedly given by Devlin Minot, the convict turned witness who is currently on the stand. During cross-examination of the witness in the home circuit court in downtown Kingston, Townsend began to read a statement that was very unfamiliar to him and immediately brought the issue to the attention of trial judge Justice Jester Stamp. We have observed a serious disclosure issue. There are two written statements concerning this witness that were never served. The first is five pages and the second is 16 pages handwritten. They related to this case significantly, Townsend said. The prosecutor interjected, We have been serving certain documents ongoing. I am just as surprised as my friend to know that they were not served. We have served everything we had on file about two weeks ago. Townsend clapped back, emphasizing that, As a matter of fact, these are statements we weren't even aware of. Justice Stamp described the issue as an extraordinarily shocking development. It is the kind of disclosure that should result in sanction, but I can't see any course of action that will be in the interest of justice, he said. Townsend told the stamp that he has perused the document and said it contained very significant information which the defense would have used to advance the case. That prompted Justice Stamp to ask the witness how many statements he gave to the police. Minot responded by holding up three fingers on one hand and said, he gave that number of statements to the police. Stamp then stood down the matter to give all parties involved time to
to go through the documents and allow the defense lawyers to take instructions from their clients. Beach Stout and the co-accused Oscar Barnes are on trial for the murder of the former's second wife, Tonya MacDonald. It is alleged that Barnes was subcontracted to do the hit ordered by Stout and that he was directly responsible for stabbing Tonya to death and cutting her throat on the Sherwood Forest Main Road in Portland before setting her and her motor vehicle on fire. The murder occurred on July 20, 2020. According to the witness, Beach Stout promised to give him $3 million to kill Tonya, who the businessman had accused of cheating on him with a policeman, robbing over $30 million from his account, and soloing his name in the streets. The witness, Minot, claimed he couldn't carry out the murder himself and as a result subcontracted Barnes for the killing. Minot is currently serving a close to 20-year prison sentence for being the contractor in the murder. He agreed to give state evidence in the case. Man who rammed $35 million bent through dealership's gates to appear in court on Wednesday. 31-year-old Nicholas Christopher Thompson, who is accused of engaging in a joyride and crashing a Mercedes-Benz GLE 53 on the compound of Swords Automotive Group on Saturday night, is to appear in the St. Andrew Parish Court on Wednesday. Thompson, who is from an address in Manly Meadows, Kingston 2, gained access to the high-end luxury vehicle valued at approximately Jamaican $35 million and crashed through the two gates of the dealership. Michelle Campbell, Deputy Superintendent of Police and Acting Commanding Officer for the Kingston Central Division, where the establishment is located, told the news that the accused is suspected to be mentally challenged. More than 1,100 people murdered so far this year. As the police high command continues to respond to the surge in murders, the latest crime data revealed that the country had recorded more than 1,100 homicides up to Sunday. Up to October 22, there had been 1,134 since the start of the year, compared to 1,276 over the same period last year, an 11% decline. Some 819 people sustained serious injuries during violent attacks over the same period compared to 913 last year. The St. James Police Division has recorded the highest number of murders with 156, followed by St. Andrew South, 103, Westmoreland with 96, St. Catherine North, 95, and Clarendon, 90. 14 of the 19 police divisions have recorded declines in homicides. According to the data, major crimes such as rape, robbery, and break-ins have seen a 13% reduction. Chang doubles down on shoot-to-kill stance National Security Minister Dr. Harris Chang has doubled down on his stance that the police should shoot to kill when confronted by armed criminals. Dr. Chang's comment has again earned the ire of civil society groups, which contend that the statement could result in excessive use of force because the police may decide to kill gunmen even after they have managed to disarm them. The National Security Minister said the use of a firearm is a deadly force. As a result, he said the intention of shooting someone is to kill the individual. The normal firearm is when, when loaded, carries a missile that is designed to kill. So saying shoot to kill is rhetorical. Once you shoot, the intention is to kill. And if you have a bike man riding past and shooting at people, I have trained the policemen and trained well, they must shoot. So you're trying to create a case for, on, in, for aggression and violation of rights, which is the belief of the individuals who are speaking. That's an objective analysis of the situation. And therefore, it renders those comments on me, people who are riding from bike, modify the firearms to shoot automatically. So they're going to empty that 18 clip in less than 10 seconds and two young individuals. And they must start thinking about, well, can I shoot at the foot? Can I shoot at the tire? Can I shoot this? No, come on now, Sandy. I don't have the problem against the AFC having their um, position and that they take a keen interest in human rights. But the comment and that comment is ridiculous. And at its best, because if you go beyond ridiculousness, then I'm saying there's somebody in there advising Miss Jackson that is almost tempting her to, to encourage sedition, which is to attack the legal and law enforcement officers wantonly, and that they must, they must take a shot literally.
What human rights group Stand Up for Jamaica has said Dr. Chang's shoot to kill comment could damage the relationship between communities and the police. Executive Director of Stand Up for Jamaica, Carla Golota, said a rise in police fatal shootings could upend the gains of community policing because residents may not be inclined to communicate or cooperate with the cops to solve crime. She added that the fractured relationship between the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the communities could also put the lives of the police in danger. Big, huge damage because there won't be no more communication, there won't be no more cooperation. And uh, by the way, you also put the police officers at risk. Because if the police officers are not welcome in the area, what Minister Chang mentioned that they have to shoot because somebody shoots them will happen. So I think that is really unfortunate. Meanwhile, Executive Director of Jamaicans for Justice, Mikhail Jackson, said residents of low-income communities are generally those who suffer from excessive and unwarranted use of force by the police. Since the start of the year, Sanjay, we have been getting more complaints from innocent citizens and from others who are accused of crime. People knocking down their door, police um, threatening them, looking for their brothers, their uncles. A woman said that the police manhandled her when she had her child in her arms. The lockup is another situation because guess what? The crime rate is high, so no mind. Whomever is accused is somehow less than a human being. So whatever treatment is missed out is quite fine. That is what we're seeing as a society. And I don't think we can go back to that stage wherein we had police and security force involved, fatal shootings as high as 200.